Good morning, good afternoon, good night, and I'm Black Knight. How are you? I hope that with everything going on, you're still coping well. And yes, um, it's kind of settling down now to a state of relative normality now that it's finally sinking in. But one of the places it's not sinking in is Jamaica. And what they're estimating is 4,608 cases if Jamaicans do not comply with the social distancing. Can you imagine Jamaicans complying with social distancing? All those men who have women all over the place, how are they going to manage? All of these women who've, who've got their little side bit on the side, who have their little bit on the side, how are they going to manage? I mean, I'm not just putting it down to Jamaicans, but Jamaicans are notorious for, you know, having more than one woman. Notorious. So now they've got, can you imagine them lock up in the house with one woman indefinitely? Well, they're saying it's the curfew is for seven days. Apparently there's a 10 hour curfew. Um, from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. And if anybody's found on the street, the police are going, they have authority to prosecute and whatever it is they do when you breach a curfew. They're also talking about state of emergency. So this is serious, people. I mean, you cannot just believe that you are exempt. And you have to understand the seriousness of this but this virus is no joke wherever it's come from. It's no joke. And yes, they're saying it affects the elderly, but you can infect a lot of people with it. And, you know, a lot of the elderly can be a suffer as a result. Uh, one thing about Jamaicans is that they're very close knit and they're very close to their family. And elder, the elderly are revered in Jamaica. They're treated with respect. It's not like in other countries, in most um, Caribbean and African countries, the elderly are respected, revered and treated kindly. You don't want to be passing that on to the elderly because the elderly cannot survive it. They cannot survive it. And when you're going out and gallivanting and you're having your little rave and you think, yes, I'm all right, Jack. This is okay, you know, me, 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 me all right. You know, this one look good. And they have a habit. I shouldn't, I'm not generalising, but the majority of Jamaicans have a habit of looking at someone and saying, yes, man, she all right. She look clean, she look nice, she look respectable. And you don't know nothing about the woman. And the same with women with men. You know, this virus doesn't discriminate. It doesn't say, okay, that woman is good looking, she looks neat and nice and she have a good job, therefore I'm going to go I'm gonna skip her and go to someone else. That's not how it works. That virus is indiscriminate and it will jump on whoever it can. And because it hangs onto clothes and it hangs onto plastic bags and it hangs onto this and it hangs onto that, and you don't know who's been touching what doorknob from what doorknob and all of that stuff. You don't know where you're going to pick it up. And so when you're kind of holding all these dances still and thinking, oh, yeah, you know, to break the monotony. Yes, it is monotonous. The whole world is suffering. And you have to suffer with us because it's no joke. If you don't, you're putting your livelihood or family and friends in danger. So I'm appealing to you, as hard as it is, just look at the bigger picture. Look at down the road and think, OK, I made this sacrifice. OK, I mean, I'll see Sonia for three months. She will understand. Or I mean, I'll see Winston. He will understand. Because everybody is in the same boat, regardless of where they are. So you really need to take this seriously, peeps, honestly, because... This virus is not a joke. And you taking risks of, you know, sneaking out. And, yeah, mum, I forgot, I forgot to see so-and-so. We can't make it, we can't make it wait so long. You know, you doing all of that. And your urgency 
is not someone else's urgency. What you deem urgent and what is necessary for you is not urgent and necessary for the government. So you really have to rein it in and use this time to be disciplined. Use this time to appreciate the family that you're with, your main family. I think they have this thing called, what they call it? Their main squeeze? I don't know if they call it me and squeeze anymore. That's probably outdated. But whoever is your main woman then, just she, she gets priority now. Or this is the time where you decide to choose who your main woman is. That's if she wants you as your main man, because some of these women, they don't mind having you as a bit on the side, as a side as a side piece. But God forbid if you decide for, for come full time, then they want you. <laughs> so don't, don't give up the one who wants you 24-7 for the one who's quite happy and is lovely to you while you're a side piece. And then when you become a permanent piece, she's a to- it's a totally different kettle of fish. So don't fall into that trap. And remember, this is the time where you hold on to those people who care about you. Those people who care about you, whether you have a job in a farm or whether you have a job in in the police force or whether you have a job as a DJ. I've seen a whole heap of videos talking about, oh, you woman, you didn't didn't want a farmer. You wanted a DJ and look what happened. No, you know, like they were really hurt when you rejected them. And now they're the ones who have a job. They're the ones who, are, who can maintain their income. So this isn't about what people do. At this time, you'll see what is important to you. This isn't about what people do. It's about how people treat you and who you feel most comfortable with during a lockdown. Is that purse, can that person make you happy? Can that person make you laugh? Is that person loving and attentive? Does that person respect you and appreciate you and is grateful for you? That's the criteria you need now. And then you lock down with that person. But God forbid you go with somebody who, you know, is quite happy to have you as a side piece. And then things change when you have to stay with them seven days a week. Maybe even after the second and third day, they're fed up. So all I'm saying, my fellow Jamaicans, please just follow orders. Stay in your yard. Make yourself as happy as you can. Make sure you have a little, make sure you have your food in there because a hungry man is an angry man. Make sure you have your herb if it's that you, you deal in and, you know, your music. And I better blast down the whole neighborhood so that those who want a little peace and quiet be considerate. Be considerate in all in all of your doings, okay? And that's all I've got to say for Mummy Blackbright. Bye-bye.